Hello and welcome you guys to my new lecture. In this video, in this awesome video, you will see like heaven, okay? This is heaven for mathematicians and I'm giving you a view on that and you do not have to pay anything for that. It's free, it's on YouTube. And where it all starts is we want to prove a very fundamental thing. It's the product representation of the zeta function. And where we start off is we, I just use z again. I'm not using the, the actual sign of zeta because it's just annoying to write it down. I'm writing this down. Oh, sorry. 3 to the x plus 1 over 4 to the x plus 1 over 5 to the x. Now, this is continuing on. Now, what do we do? And actually what we are doing, this was done by the famous mathematician Euler. I'm a big fan of Euler because he was so freaking genius that he already found out so many things that one cannot study mathematics without hearing his name. And if you did, then I don't know where you studied math because Euler is like the giant in mathematics. Okay, so what did Euler do? Euler said, okay, let's look at this formula. And he said, okay, if this is like this way, one could actually do a little thing and divide the whole equation, okay? Divides the whole equation by 2 to the x. Okay, what will happen is we will get 2 to the x plus 1 over 2 to the x divided with 2 over to the x will give you 4 to the x plus 1 over 6 to the x plus 1 over 8 to the x plus 1 over 10 to the x and continue this. Actually what you have written down here is these are all multiple numbers of 2, okay? While 2 is a prime number, remember that. Now what he did was he just took the difference between these values. So he took this and uh, subtracted from this value, this sum, this here. What he got was z x, now here a bracket, 1 minus 1 over 2 x. Okay? Now what was left here? It was 1 plus 1 over 3 to the x plus 1 over 5 to the x plus so you can see all these numbers were subtracted here in the other sum. So what is left is we six is away, so seven to the x plus one to the nine to the x and so forth. So all these numbers that are relatively prime to two, or if you look at this, these are just the oh sorry, these are just the odd numbers, okay? These are all the odd numbers. Now Euler didn't stop here, okay? What he did was actually he said, okay, that's actually pretty nice, but I'm not stopping here. I'm dividing this whole thing by 3 to the x, okay? So we'll, we'll want to do this. And what he got here was 1 over 3 to the x plus 1 over, so we go all down here, x plus 1 over 15x. So it's just taking this, this, this. This is 1 over 21x plus 1 over 27x and so forth. So just divide this by 3x. Now, what did he do? What did he do? Now he saw this series and this series, and then he subtracted these both, okay? What would happen then? I'm taking a new paper. I'm just leaving this here. So this way, if you subtract both of these equations, you will end up having this. And what you are left with is Mm, all the numbers that are relatively prime, mm, eight, nine, ten, I think it's 11, okay. and so forth. Now, 
Okay, this looks nice. This looks really, really nice. And you see, these are all the numbers that are relatively prime to 2 and 3. Okay, there is no 3 or 2 here in all these numbers. And actually, this is uh, just coincidence that we only have prime numbers. If you would continue this step, one could see that you will get an infinite product of these kinds of things. Okay? And you continue this on, and what you will end up with is... Okay, I'll, I'll just go here. Pi k to the x, and you just continue this on. And uh, if you look at the procedure, if you take all the uh, the prime numbers here in the denominator and we subtract these out from the sum, what will be left? Because 5 will go away, 7 will go away, 11 will go away, and all the other numbers, what will be left is only the 1. Okay, so if we rewrite this, when we just divide all this stuff on the right hand side, so we get this, and I'm, I'm using a new kind of presentation, I hope you know this, 1 minus 1 over 2, uh, not 2, sorry, pi i x, pi i are just the prime numbers, then this is a true statement that the zeta function, which was actually equal to this, I will just rewrite this, n to the x, and n started with 1 and went to infinity, and this can be represented, I will just write it here down, I hope this looks better now, this zeta function can be written in two ways. One is writing it down as a sum, and the other is writing it down as a product, and I will take the product sign in front of it, because we have here the one, it doesn't change a lot. It can be written as, uh, I will use this i to infinity, and what we have is 1 over 1 minus pi i minus x. Wow, this is astonishing, okay? This is a very astonishing thing, and if you heard about the Riemann, um, Riemann conjuncture, um, what it actually tells you is, or the Riemann hypothesis, is that this zeta function has zeros, okay, we will talk about the zeros later on, they are always having a real part at, or, or actually I won't talk about that, but actually what the Riemann hypothesis tells you, it's telling you how the prime numbers are distributed, okay, and if one proves the Riemann hypothesis, he, he proves Gauss's theorem. I, I won't go into details here, it's just uh, related to prime numbers, and actually you now see why this is actually related to prime numbers. Because we have here on the left-hand side, we have the Riemann function, and actually this relates to all the prime numbers. Actually, if you know everything about the zeta function, then you know everything about the distribution of the prime numbers, and this is the big topic that we are talking about, okay? So, I hope you had a fun on this video. I know this was a little bit um, tedious to do all these calculations, but I hope it's just funny to follow, and I hope you subscribe, subscribe my videos. If you have questions, feel free and ask, and I will try to answer them as fast as possible, okay? So, guys, I wish you a nice day, have a lot of fun with mathematics, and hope to see you next, okay? See you guys!